thank you so much for uh, the invitation. I'm so uh, honored to be in this panel talking to you and all these amazing professionals. Um, so I'm going to be talking about uh, OSINT. Um, as Linda said earlier, I'm a freelance journalist. I used to be um, I used to work with the New York Times and now I'm freelancing and I'm specialized in open source investigations, also called OSINT. So what is OSINT? OSINT is basically intelligence. It's open source intelligence. It's intelligence that is formed uh, from any publicly available information. That means user-generated content or social media. Uh, that means satellite imagery and any public databases. I can spend hours here talking about the uses of OSINT for journal and journalism, but I'd rather show you uh, an example of, of the story that I published earlier this year with Vice. That is a great example of how OSINT can be used in journalism. So we have a video that I hope will play now. On the morning of April 9th, people in Myanmar woke up to terrifying messages flooding their social media. In the city of Bago, just 55 miles northeast of Yangon, a massacre was unfolding. Um, why did I say that this is a good example of how OSINT can be used in journalism? So in this case, in this event specifically, it was something that happened in the middle of the night and at a location where no journalists were allowed to access afterwards. All witnesses to this incident were either in hiding or were too afraid to speak to the media. So basically what all we had were these social media posts. Uh, as you can see here, we had social media posts of witnesses describing what was happening hour by hour, uh, mostly on Facebook. We had videos and photos of people um, shared to Facebook at the time. So all the content I really had to tell the story was on social media. So what do we do once we have this content? Uh, first step, obviously, is verification. One of the most important aspects of OSINT research is geolocation. So here you can see on the left, this is a frame that I took from a video. It was very dark. It was filmed at night. There was barely anything that I could identify in that video. But I was able to find these, the, the, these electric posts, these electric um, structures in the video. And I finally found it on using Google Street View, something that we use almost on a daily basis to find, I don't know, a grocery store or a bakery in our neighborhood. Um, then once you're able to, ver to verify the location of a video, you're also able to find when that video was filmed. So once you have the where, you can find the when. Uh, there is, this is an example, that same video at one point, you could see the barely faint uh, light of the, the sun rising and using a tool called SunCalc, you can calculate exactly at what time that video was filmed based on the location of the sun. Finally, once you do this to different videos and you're using satellite imagery, you can verify uh, where multiple videos were filmed. So in, in this example, that one video, I was able to verify that it had been filmed on the same block on the opposite side of another video. So once you do this at a, at, at a scale and use satellite imagery, you can have a bird's eye view of the situation that you're covering. So for example, in this case, uh, using Google Earth, I was able to pinpoint where all the videos I had, where the social media posts, what, what they, they were referring to. And then I had a, a more broader idea, a broader view of what is, was happening in that situation, in that specific case. Um, of course, I told here that technology can help uh, telling these stories, but it's not all of it. So I told you that at the, at the beginning, all I had were social media posts. Of course, I reached out to those uh, users who had shared those videos and eventually was able to talk to them. And with that, I got more content and I got most of all, the most important, more details. Here you're seeing some screenshots of my conversations with them. I would ask them, can you pinpoint on a map when this happened? Can you pinpoint on a map 
uh, how did you escape or do you have more photos? And eventually I also interviewed these witnesses to my story. This was a very, very quick example of how OSINT or open source intelligence tools can be used in journalism. I'm not the only journalist doing this. As I said, I was one of the founders of the Vision Investigations team at the New York Times. They're still there doing amazing, uh, amazing journalism and amazing investigations. Uh, the BBC Africa, I have done award-winning investigations using OSINT tools as well. And um, most importantly, Bellingcat. Uh, if you guys don't know them, definitely check them out. They are um, a collective of open source investigations doing also award-winning investigations. Uh, if you're interested, uh, follow me on LinkedIn, follow me on Twitter, and I'm happy to answer any questions about OSINT and journalism. Thank you. Barbara, thank you so much for giving us more detailed uh, insights on um, what in OSINT actually is and how open source investigation actually works. And uh, what I love about your um, example is that it shows that it's not just about using technologies, but it's also about using core journalistic um, um, skills like um, uh, asking the witnesses uh, who who are um, uh, there and um, uh, trying to get more information about uh, the, the topic that you're researching about. Um, also, a quick um, follow-up question. Would you say that it is necessary for journalists to um, go into technical details when it comes to understanding algorithms and how it actually works? Or is it enough to just apply uh, some of the tools that you just mentioned, like uh, satellite imagery and, and uh, Google Street View, etc.? How much do you have to go into um, uh, understanding the technology behind these tools? I think of course, if you're interested and you want to specialize in this kind of work, it is always good to understand how the technology behind it works. But if you're just starting out, just learning how to use these tools, and all of these tools are free, Google Street View, uh, SunCalc, uh, Google Earth, all of these are free tools that you can use online. And um, once you learn how to use them, you, you can already do open source investigations. There is a huge um, community on social media. There's a huge OSINT community on Twitter of people that are just sharing information and sharing tips on how to do this kind of work. So you don't necessarily need to know how to code, for example. I'm terrible at coding. I cannot code at all, uh, but I can do this kind of work. So mm -hmm. it's, of course, learning the technology is always good, but it's not uh, necessary. Okay, that's, that's good news. That means you don't necessarily have to code to become a, a great um, open source investigator. <laughs> um, thank you, um, Barbara.